Good morning and a warm welcome to the Friday Club Break Time With interview, our feature where every week we speak with an expert in schools marketing and admissions. This week I'm really lucky to be taking my break time with Eugene Lowe, who is Head of Schools at the Grange School in Singapore. Welcome Eugene, thank you for joining me today. Hi Sophie, hi everyone, thanks for having me today. Yeah. We're really lucky to have you with us this morning. I've been really looking forward to speaking with you today. Um, just before we get going, Eugene, can you tell us please a bit more about yourself and your school, The Grange? All right, uh, The Grange is, uh, I, would, I would say, I, I love telling people that The Grange is a quirky school and hopefully mm -hmm. as we speak about it, you will see why I would term it quirky. Uh, it is a very young school. We're only two and a half years into our journey since it's open. Mm -hmm. uh, small school at the moment because um, uh, we we were our model had been to grow organically uh, yes. and therefore our first year I think we had we started the school with like six students and it just organically grew and the plan had always been to grow year on year so we're not in a big rush mm -hmm. and at the end of year six um, we hope at full capacity, we'll never have more than 160 children. And it's deliberate that we wanted to keep that small school feel to it. Mm -hmm. uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of the age of the children, we had uh, interestingly started off as, as only a primary school section. And about uh, a year ago with the, I would say the requests or the demands of the parents whose kids are already here, Mm -hmm. uh, giving us a little bit of pressure and hence we we are in the process of opening up the preschool section and it's because they they really love what we do here and they want the younger child to be able to be part of the family so to speak yeah, yeah so that's kind of in a nutshell the Grange and I'll tell you a little bit more as we go along uh, I think that's brilliant, Eugene. And one of the things that you know you've said to to us here at the Friday Club is that you purposefully want the Grange to stay as a relatively small school for those mm -hmm. students. Can can you tell us why that is? I think. Well, firstly, uh, Sophie, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the international school scene in yeah. Singapore, but on this tiny droplet of an island. Mm -hmm. We only have 59 international school options, only 59, you know, on this island. So when, when our bosses wanted to start the school, and by the way, we are a small school, but the irony is we're actually part of a very big uh, group of schools, you mm -hmm. know, so our parent company is quite large. Uh, so when they wanted to start the school, they wanted to, to basically put on the table a very different option to parents. Mm -hmm. Because we're mega schools, like my last one, we were as large as 4,000 students on one single campus with 1,000 staff on site every day. Uh, and now I'm at this school where, you know, it's 50 people on a small piece of land uh, across a, a building that's only two story tall. So it was deliberate because I think there are no longer that many options. And myself uh sophie growing up i grew up in the village yeah now, i grew up in the village where i knew everybody my parents knew everybody everyone knew everybody and their grandparents and their late great grandparents mm -hmm. so of course we can't we can't recreate that but in terms of a school i think what we can recreate is that small community field where where everyone knows everybody you know yeah uh, and that's kind of that's kind of how we would like to position ourselves, and that's why um, I mean, interestingly, as I was saying to you just now, I'm not sure whether we're the best example of good marketing because sometimes we deliberately turn away parents because uh -huh. we want to ensure a good mix of people in the village. We want to make sure that we are the right fit of school for them, and when yeah. we are not, we actually say you might want to check out another school because we're mm -hmm. not that school for you. Yeah, that's a bit quirky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sounds very authentic and it sounds like you have a lot of integrity with those conversations with prospective yeah. parents. Yeah. What type of family do you think fits well at the Grange? 
I think for for like myself, my son Aiden is at the school,、mm-hmm. uh, and one of the things that I was very clear even when Aiden was about two or three and before he was old enough to attend school was, Aiden was always going to be a very different kind of child, you know、yeah. he. He loved to be in nature. He love he's he's such a natural inquirer, which I'm sure most kids are anyway. But he would be the kind of kid that want to be out in the sun, want to be, you know, with his feet in the soil, and、mm-hmm. he, he's not afraid to get muddy. And I think just like me, the parents here almost want to go low tech in some、yeah. ways, because. You know, when you go out to restaurant, every child you know has an iPad or mobile phone or some sort of digital device.、Uh, and I think many children, that,、uh, many parents that、I、speak to when they come visit the school, quite often, in fact, the first thing I always ask them, I I usually start the interview by asking the parents. I said, "Tell me, as parents, what do you wish is the kind、uh-huh. of education I would get? You know, what do you want the child to become?" And more often than not,、uh, I mean, of course, there are others who say, "I want my child to be a millionaire and blah blah." Must be a millionaire. Try harder. But then I think a lot of the parents that end up choosing us, or we mutually we chose each other, was our parents who said to me, "Eugene, they have all the opportunities in the world today to be in the city,、mm. to be in the school campus that's right in the middle of the city." Uh, to be as metropolitan and global as they can be, to be as digital, and living in smart homes, but、yeah. I, I don't want my child to forget what the chicken looks like with feathers intact, you know,、yeah. or what a fish looks like with its head and tails intact. So I think this is the sort of parents that consistently come to us, and we don't really advertise a lot.、Uh, mm-hmm. We do share a lot of stories on social media. But I think the parents here are our best advocates because they go and tell their friends that, hey, at this school, the children actually know what the chicken looks like, you know,、yeah. and that's that's how they're the best word of mouth, you know. Yeah. So I think we we continue to attract parents、uh, to this school for the parents who want that. Yeah. But at the same time, unlike many small schools, that when they're small, they're almost they're almost afraid to dream big. But at this、mm. school, we often say we're small, but we make sure that your child's learning is never compromised. Yeah, meaning that they must still get the latest and the bestest pedagogy、uh, approaches to learning, just that it is in a very small, intimate setting. Yeah, it sounds extremely wholesome, Eugene. Sounds idyllic for the the pupils that. Yeah,、uh, we, the, we hope yeah. we will stay this way for as long as we can. Yeah, I hope so too. One of the things that you said to me previously, when I asked you about your motivation for the Grange, you said to me, "I want to build a school for my kids," and I just thought that was so beautiful. And I'm really glad that you've talked to us about the kind of school that you wanted there for your children. And it sounds like it's having such a positive impact on other pupils as well and other families in the area. How do you go about communicating? What the Grange is all about to prospective families. Oh, I would say, Sophie, one of <laughs> one of the criticisms I would say my bosses would sometimes、yeah. mention is that they think we spend, or when they say we, my myself and my marketing executive.、Uh-huh. I mean, we're a small, lean team. So Melanie and I, we often just, for example, last week we had a Canadian family who has visited us five times. Mm-hmm. You know, just because they were undecided, and the reason why they came back five times, Sophie, was they just wanted to find out more. They just wanted to find out more, and they were almost afraid to make the wrong choice、yeah. for the girl, right? Because there's so much pressure on a parent to、mm-hmm. make the right choice, isn't it? It's a big decision. Yeah, it, it is. But I kept telling them it's not. It's not a decision you cannot reverse. Mm-hmm. And that, or I think, the parents felt a bit more shit. And I think, in the end, the the father got it, and he said to me, "I think I keep coming back because I feel like I'm talking to a friend."、Mm-hmm. And I think the criticism we get from bosses is, "Oh, you spend too much time on each prospect." But I think this is one of those school where you have to feel it, you have to see it in action. 
you mm -hmm. have to take slow time to understand it before you see the beauty of it. You know, yeah. it's a bit like being a tourist in an exciting city for two days. It's never quite the same as when you keep going back to it and you actually have spent time with it. So I think, fortunately, we're the sort of school that when you know us and spend the time with us, it grows on you. But if you're in a hurry, you could miss us. But yeah. that's okay. We're not that kind of school for you anyway. Yeah. That's great. That's so insightful. And you've said there that getting the sense of the community of the school and the feel of the school when you're in person is a big selling point for your prospective families. How have you managed to convey that with COVID and various lockdowns and restrictions that we've all been facing? I think I think that has um, I think that whole narrative of telling people who we are, it's just taken a different format, you know. Mm -hmm. And because we we were very, or at least I was very conscious that the Grange was never going to sell a place unless people knew what we were about. So. Therefore, I think we were always very precious about making as much information available. In fact, I think, I think uh, anyone who comes to us would say we often give far more information than they would expect from a school. And in fact, they, they often make a comment that, oh, at the other school, I only spent 15 minutes, but with you, I've actually taken an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, or unfortunately, that hasn't changed with virtual e-open house. Mm -hmm. We still do a lot of one-to-one -one talking. We still do a lot of uh, attention in, in terms of communicating what we are. Uh, even though every open house or e-session appointment is booked for an hour, we never really put a cap on an hour. Yeah. So yeah, so it's always just about taking time. The format has changed. I think the message is the same and hopefully the, the sincerity that comes mm -hmm. true it's still the same. It's never quite the same when you can't feel that mm -hmm. person in front of you. Uh, but I think that's the best we can do for now. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a very strong feeling that that sincerity does come through. I think that everybody listening to this, when this podcast goes out, will understand that that sincerity because I really feel it talking to you now. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. You, you've also said to me that you go into your virtual open houses completely unscripted. And I know that there'll be marketing professionals listening to this who probably think, <laughs> oh, wow, gosh, I could never do that. Um, what's your strategy there, Eugene? You know what? You're right. My, my marketing manager thought I was mad, <laughs> you know. And my director said, well, Eugene, I'm fairly confident and I've only been in education for 40 years, he said to me. And he said, but unscripted. I said, I said, Ron, it's like talking to a friend, right? Do you put up a script, you know, in front of a friend? And I said, give me a chance and let's try it, you know? Huh. And that's kind of our approach with our children as well. It's like, hey, what have you got to lose? Just try it one time, right? So we did, and guess what? Everyone loved it. I've been planning it, including my marketing manager now. Mm -hmm. He loves it because he feels that there's less preparation work for him, mm -hmm. you know? But having said that, it doesn't mean that we don't already have information ready to dispense. So if it ever comes up and someone say, tell me more about your fees, you know, we have information that we can just you know, ping out to the parents in the, in the chat room. So we, we are kind of ready that way, but never mm. quite wanting to, oh, question one must be about curriculum and question two must be about this and that. And yeah. so no, and in fact, quite often, uh, I think the parents that have attended more than one and <laughs> they seem to keep coming back as well is we talk beyond just the school. We talk about everyday parenting advice or how to choose a school or anything and in fact I think at one of the session I think I think my my colleagues caught me saying you know what this probably is not the school for you mm. you know and that probably shocked the other prospects in the room for principal to say that but I think that's how genuine it was and 
mind you, Sophie, these uh-huh. are, I mean, because we're such a young school and the oldest children I have are grade three. Yeah. So these parents are very young and many yeah. of them, this is the first time they're being parents. So I think, I think, I, and I often say this, we are a school not just for the kids, we're a school for mm. the parents. And I think, I would like to think that everyone that walks through these doors and stay for a long time, we start to appreciate that we really run this like a family, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like the big daddy at the end of the table, you know? And, and parents always appreciate that they can come mm. to me and talk about anything. And I think that's how we kind of want to be consistent in all our practices, even in our marketing campaigns is never be afraid to discuss anything with us, you know? Because that's what the families do, right? The, yeah. Even the most difficult conversation, at some point, you discuss over a table, and then you'll be all right. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, Eugene, we've had a couple of guests on break time with um, this feature, and they've said to us that they've seen a type of new persona, if you like, of parent emerging, particularly in early years, because they are so young, and um, mm. they've got children of that age. And some of those guests have talked about the fact that they've noticed that they have to communicate in a slightly different way because of that age difference. So they might be of the generation that's grown up with instant access, hyper personalization, social media. And is that something that you've noticed when you're talking to parents? Definitely. In Mm. fact, I think I think that's why I think it's so important that part of our education is educating the parents to slow down themselves. Mm -hmm. Because you're absolutely right. Many parents come and, you know, in fact, quite often we get mom who's really keen and ready to talk. And that's Mm -hmm. like, I've got 15 minutes. I've got busy meeting. Tell Mm -hmm. me everything I need to know in 15. But in the end, he stayed for 45. Yeah. But I think that is... That is a strong message that at the school we, 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 we do really well. So I like how you say, I mean, I've thought about it. We are not afraid to put our foot down on what we represent and our integrity at this place. Yeah. And one of our integrity is really wanting people to slow down and understand things. And even with children, that's our philosophy, you know? slow down you know you have your time to learn and learn it well and learn it at your pace uh, never be in too much of a hurry of course if you are really good and you want to go faster there's room for you to do that but yeah. so I think back to the question about parents we definitely notice that but I think that's where schools sometimes if they're not careful and if they're not confident in the sense that if they think oh, I got to get this client, you know, because I got to make sure I meet my target. Mm. Then you fail to communicate subtly what you represent. Because I think the parents from day one, from the first encounter, I do believe that it's such an important thing for them to really get a sense of who you really are. Just so that when they finally make the decision, they will never come back and go, oh, I thought you were something else altogether, Mm. you know? So I think that's how we form. Yes, of course, we lose some in the process. Yeah. The other thing as well that's interesting is a lot of parents now, uh, based on the experience elsewhere, because of technology and so many great learning apps that are out Mm -hmm. there, you find a lot of parents almost just expect the school to upload tons and tons of photographs and videos and things like that. But at our school, we often say, do little Johnny, go home today, talk to daddy and mommy, and before you play this video, tell them what this is about. Mm. Because again, it's making sure that parents must spend time with the children, yeah. must really invest time. And that's why in the interview process that I do the parents, very often I say to the parents, tell me, are you invested in your child's education? Because I can't do it on your behalf, you know? We can be here to give him what he needs as educators, but you have to be willing to invest your part of the partnership into it as well. Yeah. Absolutely. For your question. Yeah. And I think it's really neat and, you know, really refreshing to hear about bringing parents into that 
you know that ongoing conversation as well because they do play such an important part in their own child's mm. education so much of that happens outside of school as you say um and it sounds to me like by going through this very open very rigorous in many cases admissions process with a prospective family it means that pupils and their families are more confident that they're in the right school it's the right thing for their child and then they stay so it sounds brilliant um you've you've spoken a little bit eugene about the fact that the grange is a fairly new school i think when you joined it was just under a year old yeah yeah how how do you start recruiting pupils for for a brand new school what what what's your go-to for for finding prospective families if you like uh well i can i can speak a little bit about when i joined the school i was told how it all started so at the beginning mm. i was given the impression that the director of the school because he he was the one that championed this whole project at the beginning and then he took time to find the right principal the right teachers etc yeah uh, as you say we're very clear about our dna from day one so i think at the beginning from what i was told uh he would organize a lot of uh, evening sessions for people to just come and have a chat. And his approach was a bit similar to me. Uh, he's a nice British gentleman who often say, let's have a cup of tea and a biscuit yeah. and we'll talk about things. And, and I think that's where he and I really work very well together because I think it's, it's that, approach with people that we enjoy, that human connection. So mm -hmm. from the beginning, I think it always been open house sessions, you know? Yep. Uh, in those days, the teachers would also sit in, you know, in the evening. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, unscripted from what I was aware, unscripted in the sense that when parents came, they, they were never assigned to a teacher or assigned to uh, someone who was going to sell them something. It was pretty much just, the director introducing about the school and then uh, from what I gather parents could ask any question or talk to anyone in the room and that includes teachers that includes the the office staff because everyone was there yeah mm -hmm. and because we're such a lean team everyone kind of have to be there you know just have extra hands. now it has uh well and as much as I hate to say it, blame COVID if we must mm -hmm. we kind of have change it a little because uh, up to pre-COVID, we were still doing face-to-face -face session, but we're starting to balance it more with parents who didn't want a big group setting, but they were much more to a one-to-one -one visit. So we're doing a combination. So since I joined, there was a combination of both, uh, but because of COVID, so we are keen to still keep the combination. That's why a lot of our e um, our e-dialogues now, there is a choice of a large group where you're told and presented to, or, you know, those coffee shop sessions uh -huh. that I talk about, unscripted, where you just, you can just rock up and talk about anything, uh, to the more deliberate sign on, no, I do not want to be interrupted. I just want to talk to someone. Yeah. I just want you to talk to me. So yeah, we, we have a combination. Yeah. Wow. Coffee. It's so insightful and it is such a different approach, Eugenia. I've really, really enjoyed talking to you today. So thank you so much. Just before we finish and I let you go back to your very busy job, can I ask you what your favourite thing is about your role at the Grange? I feel like I'm in everything because we're such a small community. And I think that that excites me so much, Sophie, because mm. we often say it takes a village to, to support the child, isn't it? Yeah. To raise a child. Yeah. But guess what? Because we're here not just for the child, but for the family, we, we need more than the village. And I think that's why no one here have a, have a dormant role where no one knows you, you know? I used to work in a school where if you're not careful, you wouldn't see the person that's teaching the next grade for the entire year. But here you can't, you can't do that. And I think that's what keeps it exciting for me. Uh -huh. And I think that's the best part I would say is the school is small. Oh, 
Plus, my son would tell you the best part is that he's here with me every day. Yeah. So oh, well, I think. How wonderful is that? It is. So, mm-hmm. well, it does come with challenges because I've got to put on my Mr. Low <laughs> hat. Mm-hmm. to put on my daddy hat so yeah but we love it yeah so having my son here plus me being in everyone's face every day mm-hmm. that's probably the best thing that has happened to me in a long time yeah wow um, what an absolutely lovely note to finish on Eugene I have really enjoyed today thank you so so much for talking to us and our listeners um I just know we're going to get lots of really good feedback on this because you know we really feel the passion that you have for the Grange and for your pupils so big big thank you for supporting us and talking to us about your experience thank you I mean on the contrary I would like to say thank you for inviting me and again I mean we're such a small school so sometimes on the on the flip side you also get many people not interested to talk to us because we're such a small school but on behalf of all the other small schools in the world, I would say to people, slow down, take the time, come visit us sometimes, you know, and feel it. And that's the best way you, you can be convinced that there is a place for a small school like us. Wonderful.